All right, it's Thursday. Normally I do shorts, but too many of you have talked about this. So my interest is at its highest level. I'm awake. I'm aware. And we're going to watch episode 15 of Star Wars vs. 40K. I deny you. So let's, let's not even get it too much into it. The people have spoken. I'm going to be talking more during these things, uh, just relating some lore, stuff like that, things that I know. And pretty much saying if I don't know something. Which, um, yeah, if I don't know, you guys tell me. Because, um, yeah, I'm an idiot. Here we go. Let's roll. Um, I need to hit the correct button. There we go. Yay. Okay. Let the bodies hit the floor. Nice, uh, nice little mood setter. Shakti felt her brow furrow as a bizarre emotion began to trickle into her mind. She had trained within many of the Jedi temples across the galaxy, had faced foes both mundane and touched by the Force who had made swordsmanship their life's pursuit, honing their bodies into variable weapons of defense and death. In such times, she would rarely feel sensations like this, and most commonly, the opponent who prompted it was sensitive to the greater powers of the universe. Mm. And yet, despite the Imperial before her being unable to use the Force, despite her being a mad, frenzied storm of a being fueled by fear and faith in equal measure, and despite Shakti's own disdain fear? for her, she no, could no. not help but feel it again. Appreciation and even grim admiration mingled with more than a little frustration fomenting a novel, if troubling, series of sensations within her. The Jedi wove to the left, living two steps within the future of the fight. The blistering engine of the micro-missile fired from the female warrior's pistol sailing past Shakti's face. The crazed woman was right behind the shot, <coughs> rearing her maul in a suicidally direct attack as she pitched her pistol forward, the weapon now empty, Shakti suspected. The Jedi Master speared toward her opponent's heart, intending to drive through the distraction and lance the sister through her chest. Her blade pierced the thrown handgun, already angling to make the decisive strike and end Rajulia's desperate bid. Rajulia, for her part, did not flinch even as she recognized what was about to happen. Shakti felt a great conflict stir within her, one she had not expected to face. It was not just that well-worn sensation of facing off against another being who had bent themselves to a singular task with mastery and focus. Not just the feeling of pitting her skills against those of a fearsome and inordinately talented fighter. This woman, the sister of battle, did not reek of the selfishness that so often pervaded the enemies which Shakti did battle with. Mm -hmm. She rarely encountered the purely evil, but this was much more than a matter of <laughs> mere nuance. The sister was selfless, utterly selfless. Shakti could feel it, so many thoughts and emotions whirling around the warrior, and yet not a one was concerned with her own well-being. She had, Shakti realized, consigned herself to death long before arriving here. Mm -hmm. No, the Jedi understood in the last moment as her saber drove through and melted the hand cannon that was to cover Ajulia's last charge. Martyrdom. This woman had resigned herself to martyrdom. Yes. And not for glory or for power, but for faith, for survival. It was as the Jedi Master realized this that the gun exploded in the air before her, scattering shrapnel and fire in all directions and into Shakti herself. She only she fired was one blinded, shot. deafened, thrown from her balance, and would have been left utterly helpless. But the Force was with her. Shakti swayed her body to the left and then to the right, moving like a stumbling, flickering flame. 
The sister charged through the smoke and fire, half-blind herself, small bits of metal cutting and drawing bloody lines and furrows on the unshielded skin of her face. Mm -hmm. She screamed as the Jedi backtracked, swinging with her maul, the weapon humming as its power field abused the molecules in the air between them. <laughs> the sound made Shakti's mantras feel like bursting as the- Once again, once again, I will say it. Even though the sister has had a lifetime of training and experience in battle, the Jedi still holds every card in this engagement. The only thing right now in my head that would set the sister apart is the element of surprise. That's the only thing. And that's part of what she just did. She let Shakti um, hit the weapon with the two rounds still inside because there was I think there was either two or three rounds still inside and that would detonate the round and cause what just happened but still I still give this to the Jedi 90% of the time the weapon waved dangerously close to the stumbling warrior's head then chest but like a soap bubble, the Jedi slipped and floated past the Power Maul's reach each time, leaping back to gain distance, the Force guiding her landing. She rose, almost smirking at the sound of Virgilia's impotent rage, but grimaced instead as sudden pain cascaded down her form, now feeling the bits of the gun embedded within her. Mm. Blood slicked her robes, and in that instant she realized that the Imperial had left one explosive shot in her pistol, luring the Jedi to thrust through it, detonating the round within. The Master grit her teeth. It was some perverse cosmic irony that the shot the blasted fanatic hadn't fired had been the only one to reach her. <laughs> Smoothly stepping over the cables, the Jedi remained calm, avoiding the swipes of her foe as the smoke cleared and Rajulia became more precise. Shakti's sight also began to return, recovering from the flash more and more with every passing second. A clever last gambit, but it is spent! Shakti yelled in an attempt to dissuade the Imperial, but to no avail. Rajulia flashed a nasty grin, yanked. You see that expression right there? Yeah, that's about as sisterly as you're gonna get. Nuns with guns, people. Fanatical nuns with guns. Taking a frag grenade from her belt with her free hand, popping <laughs> the pin with the thumb of her power <clears throat> gauntlet and hurling it at the Jedi. Shakti extended her own hand in response, reaching out and seizing the explosive from the air with a net of concentrated strands of pure force. With a flick of her wrist and mind, the master sent the lethal grenade sailing out of one of the squat windows. Rajulia had never stopped, however, bellowing hymns of hatred as she pressed the attack again. Shakti held her saber easily with her other hand, deflecting and dodging the next three swipes at the sister Palatine's sinister weapon, forced back, but little more. The Imperial grunted, sweat flying from her hair as she twisted and lashed out, aiming to catch the Jedi's leg. Yet the Tergruta was a master duelist, and the environment favored her far too much, stepping out of the way with precognitive mm -hmm. ease, kicking the sister in the face with the same leg. Rajulia could take a hundred more strikes and never land a single one, but Shakti would not give her a hundred more. As the sister reeled, the Jedi Master drove in, feet light as feathers in spite of her wounds, ducking under another sweep as Rajulia covered her sudden withdrawal. The Jedi made a full turn, bending with inhuman grace to dodge the backswing of the sister's attack, <coughs> using the force to propel her forward, ceasing her spin, and finishing it. Rajulia growled blood, a sound utterly composed of vicious pain and rage, but could do little as the blue blade of the Jedi she faced burst from her back. Shakti held her blade steady within the Imperial's chest, expecting the sister to fall and slice herself in half with the movement. Mm. Rajulia held firm enough to avoid that humiliation, even as trails of red began to drip from her nose and color her unpainted lips. The power mall pulsed as it hit the ground, bouncing once before coming to rest on the cracked pavement of the bunker floor. Shakti could feel the woman's powered gauntlet, now empty, 
clasp her shoulder, the hand exerting a crushing pressure which the Jedi fended off with a sheath of the Force. Still, as Rajulia's legs gave out, Shakti was borne down to a crouch as well. The woman tried to speak, but a gout of blood spilled crimson from her lips in place of any words. Shakti's blade had punctured both her lungs, mm. angled as such. The sister had already spoken her final words, her eyes already losing their focus, and with a small twist of her wrist, Shakti severed her spine and Rajulia's grip on her shoulder slackened. As the Jedi began to pull away from the defeated, dying Imperial Priestess, Shakti wished that this could be the last assassination she would need to carry out. But she planned to be as thorough as possible. They needed to assure a victory here above all else. She jerked then as the sister's grip returned, this time on Shakti's wrist, her blade only half withdrawn. The fanatic was holding it in place. Discipline and devotion never falter. The woman managed to choke past the blood streaming from her mouth. Shakti felt the cold shock run up her spine and jerked her hand, but was held firmly in place oh, with a grip no. tighter than before. I am his servant. The sister gasped, raising her free hand, her fist clenched around another grenade, a circular one. Oh, Shakti no. tried to rise again to pull herself off this dying maniac, but the sister clutched her tightly, punching the Jedi in the stomach with the grenade bearing fist and driving the air out of Shakti's lungs, nearly breaking her ribs. An instant later, an activation chime sounded from the bomb. Oh no! The Jedi furrowed her brows, gritting her teeth in sudden frustration. The woman was still fighting. This is, I was saying, element of surprise. She doesn't know what she's messing with. You, she should have just moved. This was becoming ridiculous. The Jedi Master summoned <laughs> forth the Force once more and shoved her free palm against the sister's armored chest, issuing forth a column of the Force strong enough to blow away an entire front line. The pressure produced was easily sufficient to shove the dying sister through the wall of the command bunker like a human bolt round. And yet, Rajulia's hair did not even wave in response to Oh, it. shit. Instead, Shakti felt her heart skip a beat felt her body chill completely, frozen by the sudden touch of fear as a golden light <laughs> oh, seemed to radiate no. out from the sister before her. Oh, no. The Jedi Master felt her power, the power of the She's Force, a saint! throw itself against the Imperial, and yet she hit something altogether oh, different. No. Something vast and old and wise. She's something a saint. shining and terrible burning and writhing in fires that screamed like the legions of the damned. <sighs> Suddenly, Shakti was- Very, very, very appropriate sentence there. Okay, for Star Wars people who do not understand what is happening right now, who don't get what is happening right now, the sister, every once in a while there is a figure that comes along. These figures are highly zealous. They are highly, um... They're committed. Their, their willpower is just unassailable. And their character is the same way. Regina is one of those. Now, every once in a while... Okay. The Emperor of Mankind, he wasn't a god. But he might have become one. They call him the God Emperor, but it's not really, tr it's not really certain in the canon if he is or is not. What is true is the case is that um, basically with the amount of faith that's been projected into the idea of the God Emperor of Mankind, he may have ascended to Godhood status. And as such, every once in a while he can... Once, every once in a while someone who is basically so entrenched in the faith can become something called an imperial saint 
and an imperial saint is basically a demigod. Um, you no longer have to worry about the Astartes as being the biggest, scariest damn thing on the block, because this thing is now. Um, it's she's an avatar of the faith. The Jedi is going to die. And there is nothing, like, if the Jedi makes it out of this alive, like, my, I'm completely reversed now. Regina is 10 to 1 a saint right now. I'm not really sure how this would happen with the Emperor being, of course, in the Milky Way galaxy, but I'm guessing that, you know, even with the warp the way it is, the God Emperor would still exist within the warp, even though the warp around here will be placid. It might be a localized thing. I'm not quite sure. But with Regina being, if, if I'm right here and Regina is a saint, this Jedi is toast. In fact, everyone on this planet is toast. Here we go. Was not in the grasp of a dying, desperate warrior, without any understanding of what she was bearing witness to, the Jedi looked up and saw not the furious, blood-streaked face of Sister Ajulia staring back, but in its place, the serene, ravaged image of a human skull wreathed in blinding flame in place of cascading hair. Shakti released Saint. her saber, deactivating it, and opened both hands as the force began to flow through her like never before. She pushed with all her might, Saint. crying out to Groot and Fangs, extending as she poured all of herself into the attempt. In response, the skull stared straight into her and spoke three words in the sister's voice. I deny you. <laughs> is she a saint? Or is she simple was she simply blessed he by the had god only emperor? arrived minutes ago. Probably blessed by the god emperor. Hearing what the sisters had discovered, he had wasted no time. Shadrick had to see it with his own eyes. And when he did, the sight did not disappoint him. Laying there, half buried in rubble and lit by the dimming light of the shrouding sun, was his erstwhile nemesis, Sister Palatine Regulia herself. She was dead, her left arm, shoulder, and chest obliterated by an explosion that must have gone off in her hand. She lay sprawled, evidently thrown back before the bunker half collapsed, her face completely covered in her own blood, her expression an empty, impassive glare, as if staring in flaccid disappointment at the sky above them. His gaze moved from her shattered body to the even less intact remains of the enemy she had been fighting. Okay, she's. She, I was thinking for a second that she was the Imperial State, but this was just the Gone Emperor giving the middle finger to Shakti. Whoever this foe had been, they certainly had not been blessed with the benefit of powered armor, and little remained. A red arm here, a strange, bloody tentacle there. For all the trouble Rajuli had caused him during her dogging of his career, Shadrick was well pleased that she had found a way to die as a loyal Imperial, wretched upstart that she was. <laughs> the Commissar Captain straightened his cap and turned away, barely managing to mask his triumph as mild disgust. Awaiting him was an attendant, a sister of the temple, though a logistical aide, not a battle sister. Her last act was to field promote Sergeant Lazarus and send him and the local garrison to intercept the artillery barrage assaulting the temple. She said to him, half reading from a report clutched in her hands. He kept his face still and unreadable, defying the nearly overwhelming urge to bare his teeth in a display of his displeasure. Even in her last act, the woman had dared defy the order of things, giving commands and field promotions to guardsmen before even verifying the loss of the command chain. <laughs> the nerve of the insubordinate dead bitch still amazed him. But all that was before we knew how well positioned they are. The sister continued, Without any support, forced Lazarus will suffer terrible casualties just on the approach. Should we send a missive to recall them? 
she asked. Again, Commissar Captain Shadrick had to hold his expression still deliberately, though this time for the opposite reason, stiffening his features to prevent the hideous grin he now felt trying to manifest onto his face. Rajulia had never been a competent tactician, and, true to her flaw, she had acted rashly, expecting men like Shadrick to clean up her mess afterwards. Not this time. No, he said, shocking the sister before him. But sir, she began. This was Rajulia's last order, her Dick. last decision of command. Dick. I will honor it. He said, squaring his jaw and straightening his jacket. The Dick. sister seemed placated by that, taking the wrong meaning from his deceptive words. Oh, how he wished she could see this now. How he hoped her shade yet lingered to watch in mute fury as the man she had declared a heretic, the man who had narrowly avoided her noose so many times, now gave orders under proper authority to her own naive sisters. Very well, Commissar. What support should we send to aid them? She asked. He felt his eyebrow twitch. These sororitas were always so outspoken, only ever truly respecting those within their own faith structure. Speaking and following the heart was such a pretty set of sentiments, but they belonged nowhere near the battlefield. I want this dick to die. None, he said. This time, the woman openly balked, mouth dropping open. Kill but him. why? She asked. He felt a muscle in his jaw jerk involuntarily. Had she been under his jurisdiction, a guardsman? He cleared his throat. Rajulia has left us with little enough to defend against the incoming assault as it is, and we cannot trust that what is left to force Lazarus will be enough after they carry out their mission if they even can. Radio the following bases. Pristine judgment and indifference. Have them pull up and send all of their forces to us as quickly as they can manage. They should arrive in time to help us hold against the enemy. The sister shook her head and then nodded, tapping and scribbling away at the data slate she cradled in one arm. The order has been sent. I'm sorry, but I must speak my mind. This is madness, Commissar! Forced Lazarus has some of our best specialist forces within it! Soldiers of Cadia, Bulgrin shock troops, Calambian patriots, death corpsmen! Perhaps you should have advised Rajulia on these facts as well, before she became set on promoting some random sergeant and sending them out to their deaths! Now, cease your questioning, or I will find another to perform your duties in your place! snapped the commissar. Mm. The sister took a step back and nodded, cowed by the sudden fury in the commissar captain's words. He restrained his smile. Hmm? Shadrick could understand why this one had not made the cut for the front uh. line. Yet he could still see that spark of defiance in her, and sighed, knowing that making more enemies so soon after losing one would make little sense, at least for now. If they accomplish their objective, then, and only then, we will offer them full support for their extraction. He conceded, and again suppressed a smile as he saw her untense at that meaningless caveat. Rajulia's legacy would be the blood of heroes and martyrs. His career, however, would be built on their corpses. He would rescue this operation, and rise as a result Seen no longer Somebody as a him. mere commissar captain, but a lord commissar as well. You are no Yorick. Soon. I want her to come back as I want her to come back as an imperial saint. That that though was, um, yes, um, that was the emperor basically looking on one of the faithful. And denying them the pleasure of killing one of his most one of his most one of his fervent subjects, um, yes, and yes, the emperor would do something like that. The Legion of the Damned line for Star Wars Star Wars people that don't know the Legion of the Damned shows up um, when everything is totally screwed, when things are past just past screwed. There there is literally no. 
um, no chance of uh, surviving or victory. Um, the Legion of the Damned is the Emperor of Mankind using cheat codes on a battlefield. Um, that's basically what the Legion of the Damned is. Um, it They are demons, quite simply put, and there are a few that we all may know that are in the Legion of the Damned, but they never speak. They never speak, they just go in and just start tearing things apart. Um, they show, they've showed up during the Desolation of Ball, they've showed up in other situations where um, particularly fervent religious uh, imperials are and they're where they're losing badly um, but they do they don't show up on just any battlefield they show up when things are at, absolutely at their darkest but this was a situation I thought for a second we were seeing the birth of an imperial saint but um, this was just the emperor of mankind basically in his in, in his own way giving Regina the chance to to kill her enemy which is one of the litanies of hate um and a and a common prayer <laughs> but oh man that was that was awesome um yeah like as soon as as soon as he started describing what was happening I was like okay this this is either sainthood or something else. I was leaning towards saint, and I was gonna. I would think that was awesome, but um, if there was an imperial saint active in active in Star Wars versus Forty K, like if there if there was a Celestine level, or even half of what Celestine is, because a Celestine is the living saint in Forty uh, K. If there was a Celestine esque level. Uh, creature, even half of what she is, there's nothing in Star Wars that could even slow her down. And I'm talking Palpatine plus Vader plus the entire Jedi Council. It would not even be. It wouldn't even be close. Um, that's as close to a demigod as you're gonna get, with the exception of probably a Primarch. A Primarch, one of the top, yeah, pretty much just a Primarch. In any case, um, I deny you, absolutely wonderful. Um, and it goes without saying, um, Shakti's biggest flaw was she she wanted to hang on for style points, and you can't do that. Um, this is why I want the Commissar to die. In any case, that's it for episode 15. It was well worth uh, checking it out today. Um, yeah. I'll catch you guys on the next one. And it's coming up, uh, probably Monday. Uh, Friday, tomorrow, I am going to be focusing on finishing up, um, Five-ish Minute War. And on Saturday, we'll be checking out ODST. Here we go. Catch you guys next time. Hit button.